Hey everybody, welcome to my next free tutorial Friday. And let's see, this is, what is it, May now, I can't even believe it. And I'm so pressed for time this week because uh, I'm finally getting my drawing mojo back and trying to finish my how to draw book. So uh, I'm gonna be pressed for time until that gets done. So quick one this week. Um, what I thought I would show you is you, by now, if you've watched a bunch of my videos on my channel, you know that I like abstraction as a part of my workflow and a way to generate new ideas and sort of break out a muscle memory, etc. So um, this is one of the techniques I like to use a lot. Um, and I found, and I'll show you examples of what I think it, when it works best and where I think it works not so well. I'm just going to make a copy of a layer here. So I have a bunch of line drawings on this one that I've done with like a brush pen, a little bit of light marker to get me started, like my other techniques, but mostly just a brush pen sketch, straight ink. And, you know, this is a very familiar, if we just look at this ship, for instance, it's a very familiar ship um, to me, a shape that I would draw over and over again. Round little shapes with some details, similar sort of cut lines and feel. And if I want to break out of that, um, a nice way to do it is to apply a cutout filter and I think it works best when you just have a black and white sketch and I'm going to show you an example of uh, where it doesn't work where you have more of a more grayscale in it um, like a pencil sketch which I'll show you next um, anyway you take a little black and white sketch um, I find my little brush brush pin ones work well and then you go over to filter and now in CS6 it's in a filter gallery it used to just be like artistic was listed here separately and you could go to cutout now it's filter gallery. Click on that and then I'm going to go to, and I think it defaults to this texture thing all the time, so expand out artistic, go to cut out, and now we can take any of those ships. Let's find the one we were just looking at. Here it is. Okay, and let's zoom in a bit. All right, so you have three options here inside the cutout filter, and what they do and I'll sort of turn them all down. Okay, if you did a number of levels, uh, that's how many grays you have. So you can see here that it actually got rid of all the grayscale that I had because there's a little bit of marker in there and it just simplified it all the way down to black and white. And if you slide this to the right, it starts to add more levels of gray. And so you can see it's starting to look more at the lighter values that were in my drawing and add more variation to the levels of gray. It doesn't really add much to this, so I'll probably leave it down in here. Okay, let's just turn it off for now. Okay, edge simplicity. It's gonna look at your drawing, and then it's going to start to abstract those edges. So as we turn this up, you start to see it become very, very abstract. And if we go all the way up to 10, it you know, extrapolates all that grayscale information and turns it into that. And so, um, as you might imagine, this is one that I use quite a bit, edge simplicity. Okay, and edge fidelity here is how true the lines sort of stay to the original. So all the way up, let's see if I add a little bit of this abstraction. So to three versus a one. So one is basically smooths it off more, two, and then three. You have a choice of one, two, or three. And um, so one is going to be the most sort of stylized and rounded. And if we go to two, it's getting back more to the original. And three gets even tighter to the original. So I have a tendency to leave this down around one or two and then push this up. And then maybe let's throw in some grays now here. Once you go with a lot of levels of uh, edge simplicity, a lot of abstraction, you can get more interesting things with your grays if you turn those up. So that's starting to look kind of interesting. And what it does, and again, you could push as far as you want, right, and come up with an entirely new design direction. And let's zoom, let's just uh, pan around here and see how it's doing with some of our other things. All right, yeah, it's going a little too far. Maybe let's bring it back a bit. So you'll see each one's a little bit different in what we're getting. And so I just play around with that. Usually I do this on an individual basis. Here I've got that at all those ships together just because I'm, you know, doing a demo uh, 
and not trying to pick us but i don't like it with the noise it doesn't make for a great underpainting when you get all this all this noise although that part's kind of interesting so if we turn these things off let's see what that was originally so i had this shape right which is pretty familiar uh, feeling and then to get something totally different right which again is maybe something that i wouldn't draw i'm going to turn up the gray i'm going to turn up the abstraction and you can see it start turning into really you know something more interesting than what it was right and you don't know if it's always appropriate but this is just a way to experiment and you can do it multiple times so i could abstract it once i could bring it back and abstract it again um, and you get something else totally different and you'll see the settings right when we start getting here sort of six seven eight i get something different each time so i'm going to go probably let's try seven let's simplify my lines a little bit yeah let's just go with something like that all right so i put it on a separate layer so we could see the differences so the base ones underneath so there's the originals and then there's the abstracted ones now keep in mind you can always layer these on top of each other so if you just wanted say for instance those interesting vent shapes or some of these little this nice faceted element that's coming right through here you can just have that on a layer on top right so it did something nice on that one right through there that was that's pretty interesting form but maybe i don't like what it's done to the front no big deal just throw a layer mask on there right grab a airbrush so just bring back the original by erasing with a layer mask right so maybe i'll keep that off of the original here but i want this angular thing right off of the one that we just stylized and i like the back so you could blend those together and you've basically created a underpainting for a sketch that's maybe a little more interesting than your original drawing it definitely gives you a design variation which is good um, to always have you know available options and so i think it's really a fun technique or fun filter a fun tool to use inside photoshop to let photoshop right through its filters give you a little variation to your designs and i use these as you know graphic underpaintings and then you start adding form and painting over the top um, i mean in a really simple fashion you could just take something like that and grab a new layer via <laughs> oops let's just do command copy command sorry on the wrong layer okay now we've just got that one and maybe i will pick out the white off of it and it looks like i'm going to get an okay silhouette i got a little notch there but that's okay I'll just delete that and sometimes i go like this and add a little bit of value to it all right hit preserve transparency throw a layer on top we'll set that to multiply set it to be a clipping path layer and grab an airbrush and just come in here and start to you know show the form and then you can start your rendering pass and we'll do the same on top with a put another layer clipping path double click it make it a color dodge and grab softer airbrush and white and come in here and start to lighten up some of these surfaces so that's kind of how you would go in next block out the big the big shapes your internal surfaces and then start rendering it however you want and then of course you could layer on photography you can add all your textures all the other things that i've done in my other uh, videos on my channel so anyway that's how you get started so let's kill that one all right so this one i'm going to show you we're going to apply the same thing filter we're going to go filter gallery and here's why i don't think that it works well with grayscale images so it was a little pencil sketch and what happens is it just gets really 
really busy and grainy even when you have the edge fidelity you know as simplified as you can get it right if you go super detailed you're gonna end up with just a really hairy mess right which could work in some instances but when I'm looking for sort of faceted stylized designs um, see where it goes you get that because there's just too much value information and that's where it's actually I found it works best with just the black and white line drawings because um, you have to go all the way to sort of something like that and then there's it's so far gone that you've really lost so much you may as well start your you know start your drawing over again so I have found that with too much grain and too many gradations it, it doesn't work as well so I think things without gradations work a little bit better so let's try this one so these are from our book Alien Race and you can see on this guy right I'm starting to get something much more interesting I mean look at my look at my standing character there right if we go all the way back it's kind of something like that that's the original drawing not that inspired let's turn up the gray a little bit let's try now let's try to play with the edge simplicity and this is where he's going to start to get more and more faceted so they're already starting to get something interesting and again that could just be one layer that I just pick out something off of that one right and let's go super abstract and see what I get all right not much there but let's go back all right so you just look for some stylization and you can play around with your lines and again same so there and you'll see you get you get a lot of variation depending if you play with the edge fidelity along with edge simplification um, so it's good to move around all of those things together and sometimes I even run the you know two or three of these and blend them together because I like what happened on the chest on one I liked what happened on the character's head on another one right and then mix them back together in Photoshop let's try this one this one will probably give us you know some not so great results just as a guess because it has too much you know value see if I go with them. although there's kind of some nice shapes there but um, you know it's so quick to just try it I don't a lot of times try to guess what's gonna happen I just jump in and give it a try um, because it's so quick uh, there's kind of some interesting shapes there All right if we want to go really stylized just run that guy up and again you can layer this back on top of the original one more and I think that's gonna wrap it up for this week um, Hope you found it interesting. Sorry I don't have more time, but uh, it's for a good reason. Trying to finish that book. I'm uh, trying to get trying to get it done. So back to the drawing board. And uh, hope you found this interesting. I find it interesting. I know I've used it quite a bit, and I think it's a great way to breathe a little bit of abstraction and originality in life and some happy accidents back into your. Uh, sort of typical drawings that you do over and over again um, and, and again try it mostly with the black and white ones I find that like you saw with the gradation stuff it doesn't work the best but uh, give it a try I think it's been around cutout filter has been around in Photoshop for a long time so uh, whether you're CS6 or older versions I think it should still all work but uh, give it a try have some fun and check back next week have a good one